Hey, what is up you guys? This is Twinless Twin here, and we're going to be watching some replays of matches against Rhinos. So we're playing the Mercatide side, and here we lose the die roll. Um, let's start to go. So first we see this opening hand. Oop, it went really quick, but you saw there's like a stone scolding there that's a dead card, so immediately it's a mold of six. And evaluating the mold of six, it wasn't really worth it, so a pretty easy mulligan there for the first hand. Um... I think the better way to do it. So this hand's a keep, and what I'm thinking is, how is this game going to play out? I'm definitely going to be jamming Shredder on two. One thing that I want to be careful of, well, first of all, yes, I'm going to jam Shredder on two. Hopefully they don't have their one of dispute pre-board, but also my opponent has two dismembers, so that's a possibility as well. Um, it's open deck list, so I know about the two dismembers. No Flame of Anor's main deck. And I'm thinking I'm going to play the Shredder. Hopefully it survives. If I do fall behind, I'm going to want at least one of the Unholy Heats. But do I really want two Unholy Heats is the question. And my opinion is no. So I think that the card that I put back here is Unholy Heat. So yeah, we put back the Heat and they suspend a Rhino's turn one. We draw a Shredder, which is great. Now what do you do here? You think, okay, well, I'll just Steam Venice tapped, save the life, then we'll fetch an island, play Shredder next turn. Well, did you consider what if they have Fire Ice? So here I'm going to play the Scalding Tarn and just pass, knowing that I'm paying the extra life, the extra two life, to not get got by Fire Ice, which I see as very worth it, um, because if I do get Fire Ice, it's such a big swing to my game plan, they could follow that up with a Rhinos, and I won't have a Shredder in play, and it's just a, a huge, huge swing. So I get this this Shredder down. They end up not playing anything. They could definitely still have the Fire Ice, but we don't know. Um, and they Shard this, so they Cascade. We Ditch. So let's see, We Ditch. Hmm, maybe it's better to do, like, is this one at a time? It's one game action at a time. We Ditch the DRC. And the thought there is that we're probably going to play a Shredder and then maybe Unholy Heat this turn. Um, triggering two shredders and we're working towards delirium so i just want to start growing my shredders first of all but also set up to get closer to delirium um so if we shredder and then on holy heat we're gonna have uh land creature sorcery guaranteed and we have three looks at an instant our draw step wasn't an instant so two looks now instant or artifact so now the question is well do you even risk it it's close. I could see an argument for preordaining. The problem is, is if you don't heat one of the rhinos and they end up having like a dismember or draw like a mountain, have a dead gone, or even a fire ice to tap your bigger shredder, they're attacking you for 10 or for eight. So you're taking a lot of damage. So in my mind, I kind of see this as a worthy risk because if we do hit the instant, I think we're in a really, really good spot to then like resolve Merktide the next turn. Um, whereas doing the conservative line, I'm not really sure is actually going to improve our win percentage that much. It could be wrong though, but I, I know that I'm, I, I think that I'm usually going for the unholy heat here. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe preordain is fine. Whiff the first one, but hit on the second one, so. Got paid off, and then I'm attacking here, thinking, all right, well, they're clearly missing red mana. Um, they can hit me for four. They can't really attack with this Shardless Agent, or I'm fine blocking. So we're actually winning this race here with the Merktide coming down next turn. They find Dismember anyways, so. And then they make another set of Rhinos. I take five. All right, and another pretty interesting spot. So they're top decking. And what we know is they could draw like a dead gone or a fire ice. Those are pretty live draws. I do think we got some info on the last cascade though. So what we saw was one, two, three dead gones. Actually, wait, how many of these were? Reveals 33 cards.
Yeah, yeah. So all of these were off. This is uh, this is the first Rhinos in the game. Or no, it wasn't the first, but these were the ones that were revealed, I guess. So two fire, three fire ice, three dead gone. We know that their odds are pretty slim. So then the question is, do we attack or not? If we attack, they go to eight. Then we kill them with a Merc Tide. But does that actually change anything? Because if they're just dying to the Merc Tide anyway. Oh, right. We, we can just play this. Um, we can just unholy heat so that we're not dead to fire ice now. Though we are kind of still dead to fire ice because they can just fire ice in our upkeep on Merc Tide. But then they can't attack us. And we draw counter spell. So. Now we need to just attack them, and they're dead. If they had upkeeped there, I think we would have been in a lot of trouble. We would have had to preordain into another blocker. It's actually not even that bad for us. A removal spell or a blocker, like another Merc Tide maybe. So not, not horrible odds. But, all right, we pick up game one. Let's go to game two. So post board, what I did here is I sided out the bolts. I sided out the stern scolding and the spell snare. Not a lot of targets for spell snare anymore now that Rhinos doesn't play Brazen Borrower. And then I brought in two Fluster Storm, two EE, a Brazen Borrower, and... Force Negation. Um, Subtlety is the one card that you'd kind of consider because I think a lot of games against Rhinos come down to Merktide Regent from them. So I do not hate Subtlety, but not playing it in this this game. We do have a Borrower and an Odawara, so we're not just completely cold. All right, and here's our opening hand. I think that it's too hard to mulligan this. Um, Preordain is like, you can usually count on Preordain for a second land. On the draw especially, it's five looks total. So too hard to mulligan a hand that has like Shredder, double Shredder, and also an Engineered Explosives. And even a Merc Titan, a counter spell. It's just like, it has everything that I'm looking for, really. The, the risk, the main risk, I guess, is getting Fire Iced. Um, but... That's always a little bit of a risk. And for a second, they fetched in response to Preordain, and I got nervous they're going to dispute the Preordain, which is probably a crazy play, but I was worried about it. Are we getting fire iced? We are. Okay, so we play a land, pass. Even if they do Rhinos here, we can still recover. But they just go for an Endurance. I think the thought is, you know, they're thinking we have Fluster, we have Pierce. I still think I'd probably jam the Rhinos, but I could see some logic behind going for Endurance, I guess. Just, we hadn't really built a very big graveyard, so Murktide wasn't really a threat yet. <laughs> Maybe this is a read that, like, they don't actually have Endurance. They probably have stuff like Flame of Anor, Dismember in hand. This attack is kind of free for them because they could just have, like, a Fire Ice or um, Dead Gone. And then Endurance deals 3 plus 2 kill our Shredder. All right, let's pause here. So we played another Shredder. They didn't do anything, so we can kind of read them. They're not having Mystical Dispute. And then we played an Engineered Explosives. This might not have been the right one to play, honestly. Um, I think that maybe Bobble would have been... Or did we draw the... I think we drew the Bobble off of the explosives. But you don't want to expose your EE early to a potential Flame of Anor. Um, so always be careful of that. I mean, you, it can be correct still, but it's something to keep in mind. And then not attacking because... I might want to double block the endurance. 
now that I have Counterspell up. So this time I block, and the reason being I can just Counterspell. And I kind of am trying to induce like a fight to trigger my Shredders. Because then I get to jam the Merktide. And I even there I find uh, I find a counter spell to protect my Merktide, so feel very good about that. And now the one major fear is just they find the Merktide. Rhinos is still covered because we have this EE in play. Casting iteration, looking for counter spells, ways to bounce a Merktide if they were to draw one. Maybe attacking with a Shredder here wasn't very smart in case they drew like a burn spell. I'm just trying to piece together what their hand is here. Um, because they're just not really doing much. So it's probably not Cascaders, although you could maybe say maybe they're not playing a Cascader because I know they know I have this EE in play. So potentially they're trying to find like a Prisma, uh, the, the Shatter. I think like Tidebinder could make sense maybe for this spot. I just crack the E anyways. Maybe not the Tide Spy. I think in this spot I should probably just bounce the Endurance. But I was like worried about becoming, I was worried about being overly hasty. Like I really wanted to save the Odawara for a potential Merc Tide in case they had a dispute or something. Because if I go, like, Bounce Endurance, and then they just replay it, and then I counter spell, and then they dispute, it could be a problem. But I guess that triggers my Shredder then. So it's probably fine. And somehow they have Violent Outburst here. They must have just drawn it for turn. I was kind of surprised when that happened. Um... <laughs> And so they go for Violent Outburst, which is lethal, just to pump their creatures, not even another Rhinos. But we do have the Odawara to bounce a Rhino token, and that they're taking lethal on the backswing from two creatures. Alright, awesome. So that was the first match. Now let's get into the second one. All right, so here's our opening seven. We're once again on the draw. Um, this hand's also great. I mean, the Bolt is not a card you want to see, but the Shredder kind of mitigates that by letting you get rid of it. So we either have the option of turn one Preordain, or more likely, I think we're just going to play the Fetch Land with the same play of trying to not let Fire and Ice delay our turn two Shredder as kind of just the max upside play. Also, saving the Preordain just helps us trigger the, the Shredder down the line, so... I wouldn't be surprised if that's, yep, that's the play I make. So really valuing not getting fire iced here. Especially in those game ones where they just have no mystical disputes. Like, take, take, your, take your beatings while you can. They play Shardless. We can easily ditch the Bolt as just a card that doesn't do anything. And then I unholy hit our rhinos. I think I just unholy. All right. Oh, it's a bolt. It one's a bolt. I think this plays a little bit sketchy because they could have dismember or another rhinos, and they do have dismember, so get kind of punished. And then I just fire off a bolt here randomly for no reason, which is bad. I think I was just like, I think I think I may have been frustrated that I got got um. Because I, if I could have represented Pierce. But yeah, so I just get crushed this game because of that. 
Like if I had held up Counterspell, the problem I saw was that I was taking eight, but I could at least like, it was actually, it was actually just kind of a tough spot, I think, if they have the Dismember. That's part of why Dismember is so good, right? Like if that's a Fire Ice there, there's no way they're winning, but with the Dismember, it's a lot trickier. All right, and this game, or this game on the play, it's post-board. Double DRC on the play with a bobble, too, is just, like, got to be a snap keep. You have so many, like, chances to just get Delirium, and if you get Delirium on turn two, you're super, super favored. Um, so, yeah, let's see how this plays out. So I'm going to play the DRC, and I expect I play the bobble turn one, too, because I'm looking for that second land quickly. We instead we hit another DRC. So now, okay, we hit the land. And the question is, what's the play? I played DRC first. I'm not actually 100% convinced this was good. The issue is they do have Fire Ice in their deck. Um, and it could be pretty bad for us if they... If we, like, don't hit Delirium. Which we have to hit Runner Runner off of the Prudin. So I think that actually maybe like double Prudin this turn and then the double DRC next turn could have been better. On the other hand, Prudin this turn could set us up for like counterspelling and endurance or something, I guess. I'm playing the DRC and then Prudin. Whereas if we go for a double DRC the, f the following turn, we might get on like endurance. I think that's actually still fine though. So yeah, I think that I think that this play was pretty greedy, but we end up just like topping a engineered explosives, which gives us more looks and we find the delirium. And that yeah, just an instant scoop because it's really really hard for Merktide to or for rhinos to come back from that. They'd have to have, like, Invoke Endurance plus Fire Ice, basically. And even then, though, they're at four cards. We're at three plus an E in play. So we're, like, up a card in that exchange. We go into game three. All right, so we're on the draw this time. And we see a hand, DRC, Preordain... EE -E, four lands. I don't love it, is my first reaction, but the EE -E is pretty nice to have. And. Oh man, it's like. So if we mulligan, we're looking for like four spells, two lands. It's pretty reasonable. I think this hand is fine to keep, but I do not love it. What I'm thinking is, like, we got to go DRC turn one. We get to, like, play Preordain and maybe EE -E turn two. Lots of looks at a Pierce or Fluster. EE -E also covers, and from there we just get to kind of get into the mid game without getting run over by some early Rhinos, which is what I like about it. Um, like, having the wrapped up answer to the first Rhinos makes it much more defensible. And here, like, I fetch Shocking to get Minor Thinning. Not really sure if that's correct. And then I play the EE to just guarantee that I'm not going to draw... Or try to, you know, get closer to guaranteeing I'm not going to draw land. So they dismember the DRC, which is probably pretty smart. Because I was going to get a lot of value from that. Top this bobble so we can bobble trick ourselves. Again, just trying to avoid lands at all costs. There was a land on top, so we get to fetch. And we're kind of just playing draw go. I think I held onto the bobble to hope to trigger either a DRC or a shredder, and I end up finding a DRC and then getting to bobble. 
And then I do want to bobble that instead just to find something as soon as possible, get some info. We're kind of getting to the point in this game where I'm thinking the only way I lose, not the only way I lose, but a major way I'm going to lose is Merktide region because I already have this Flusterstorm and EE covering their rhinos. So I'm going to try to be extra cautious in holding up the counter spell for Merktide. So then the question is like, do I fluster the rhinos here or not? So I accidentally yielded, so I couldn't pay for this shredder, but I don't think I would want to pay for the shredder anyways with the thought being all right so they have a rhinos coming i think they have a rhinos coming off next turn i can ee -E the rhinos and their upkeep and have counterspell fluster storm up clearing all their threats dashing ragavan makes it a two-turn clock i'm not really sure what they have but if they have violent outburst they can't really afford to cast it here either they have flame of anor but we're just able to fluster storm that because we had dashed Ragavan earlier. So I actually, I surveil a Murktide here and I put it on top. I'm not really sure about this. When you think about what it comes down to of like, what are their outs? So they could have like a good two card combination in hand, like Tashana plus Mystical Dispute and we lose. But assuming these rhinos are cleared, what are their outs? They could have another Cascader and then draw like Mystical Dispute for turn. Um, they could have their own Merc Tide, but we have a Counterspell for that. But I'm not sure what situations the Merc Tide actually improves our likelihood of winning. Because I think in all the situations where they're not dying, the Murktide's not actually helping us. That's that's my thought. I can't think of anything specific, so... Probably should have been the Murktide there. Look for something like a... Like, in case they end up having a Murktide in hand. I don't think they have Murktide in hand, because I think they would have gone for it on a prior turn, but... And I think this time I will bend the Murktide, thinking, okay, if the Rhinos resolve, my out is either Bolt or EE, so I need to put that back. And now I have to attack. Um, I don't dash the Ragavan, though, which might be wrong. Maybe I'm supposed to dash the Ragavan in case they, like, top deck Ice. And then, like, Ice into Ice or something, or Ice into Violent Outburst. So I probably should have just dashed to put them on have to answer DRC. Can't kill me. Yeah, that's probably correct not to dash and let them keep the, the Charlotte in play. I was thinking maybe I draw on Holy Heat next turn and then if they have like a Flame of Anor for this thing, I guess that's the thing, right? If they have Flame of Anor keeping the Ragman back, I could draw on Holy Heat. I don't actually have Bolt in my deck because this was game three. All right, and that's the match. Now let's go into two more. So again, playing against Rhinos, one Dismember in this deck. This hand on the play is just perfect. Um, like DRC into Shredder means a lot of pressure in the air early. Their Rhinos are gonna be pretty ineffective. We find the counter spell immediately almost, so. Really nothing to complain about here. We're trying to get a fast delirium. I ditched the um, the expressive because I'm thinking like Preordain into land drop for counter spell or maybe even Preordain into Murktide are going to be my play next turn. Hmm. Oh, I think I played the Ragav in there because if I Murktide, then I'm not going to have Delirium with DRC. So that makes some sense to me because now we're just hitting them or they're like doing the whole racing thing where they're just not going to be able to catch up on board and race us. And we get to go Murktide 
plus Counterspell now. And even keep Delirium, too. I think main phase one Merktide was correct in case they have subtlety. Because we're actually still keeping Delirium here. And then I think they actually do have subtlety. So yeah, we would have gotten an extra point in, which would have made this Shredder lethal on its own. Um, but it's just still really hard for them to come back here. And we do end up getting the match, or the game one. So I'm going to post board. I think we might have boarded slightly different this time because I think I have the subtlety in. And I think what I did is I just took out a heat. I think that's the other card that's like reasonable to cut. You don't want to cut all of them because I think some heats are nice to have. But I don't think you need all four always. They don't always answer Murktide. And they clean up half of a rhino, so they're kind of a weird card where they can be fine, but you're not really wanting to draw multiple anyways. I think three is a fine number. This hand is interesting. It's not really the greatest, but you do get to like play Ragavan turn one, which is always nice. Um, and then from there, it's kind of questionable, but we have like a ton of good draws. We could draw pl Pierce, Fluster, Counterspell, Shredder. It's already like 12 draws. And we get two looks at it because of the bobble. So I think it's it's pretty reasonable to keep this. Let me do draw Counterspell. And then off the sh in the off chance that the Ragavan survives, we can like maybe Iteration. Now we can bubble trick ourselves, looking for like more counters or shredder. And yeah, so they suspended two rhinos to start the game. That's like a Lorien. But this Ragavan's hitting, so. We find a uh, shredder. I think I play the Shredder first to bait out a Foot Falls in case they have like Foot Falls Fawn. I don't expect them to have Foot Falls Fawn, but I think it's better to play the Shredder first and bait that out. Um, I guess the downside is like if they have like a Flame of Anor, maybe they use it on the Ragavan instead of the Shredder if we attack first, but. All right, we even get to Merktide here too, with Spell Pierce and Subtlety up. I mean, if this Merktide resolves, we're in really good shape. Then the only way it won't resolve is Subtlety, so we have Subtlety to cover their Subtlety. Now they have one card. They can't really unsummon this Merktide because we have a Pierce to protect it. They'd have to have like Odawara plus Land as their last two. It's important we start attacking because they have these rhinos coming off suspend. And then we don't have to block here, and we don't want to risk like a dead gone um, dealing two damage to kill our guy, our Merktide, so not blocking is better. If we do block with the Merktide on a 4-4, four four, then they just shoot it for two, and we can't spell pierce that. We need them to pay the full three mana to unsummon, so that gets us the match. All right, we've got one more. These matches against Rhinos, they've been going pretty well, guys. They've been going pretty well. Can't complain, can't complain. All right, so we are on the draw, and we open with a pretty good hand, minus the Spell Snare, which isn't great. Begs the question, like, do we want to play Ragavan turn one, or do we want to hold it? Um, I think it kind of depends what the opponent does. 
This has been Rhinos. And we draw Iteration. I think that we should probably just play the Ragavan turn one, to be honest, but I think I might not. I think I don't because I'm hoping to spell snare a fire ice. I'm like not try I don't want to give up on that card. I don't really I'm not sure I really buy that though. I'm not sure I buy into that theory. Like it would have been kinda if they had fire ice dust. I guess then we spell snare the fire ice to delay them or deny them the draw and hold up peers. Yeah, maybe it's not horrible. I was thinking because I have the bolt in hand, like I can clean up I can pierce a rhinos and then um, bolt the shardless to keep Ragavan going. And here I'm thinking, all right, Flame of Manor, let's draw two. Knowing they have these rhinos on suspend means I'm gonna need to try to find some answers. So I, I think Flame of Nord draw two is pretty defensible there. And they've just drawn all of their rhinos. So that was pretty lucky of us. Have to admit that was pretty lucky of us. And I think we actually knew that because when they cascaded with the violent outburst, it went all the way down to their second to last card when they had two rhinos left in deck. So we knew that their last, they just like weren't going to be able to cascade for the rest of this game. Again, super lucky, not a really normal thing that would happen. And I think we'd probably be dead if that didn't happen exactly, but we'll take it. I think already, I mean, this game is looking not even that good for us as is, so... And here they have a tide binder for our Ragavan to stifle the trigger. They get to make more rhinos, which means Ragavan's not getting in anymore, most likely. And there's like a interesting argument of whether you want to unholy heat or not here, but my hope is. Maybe I can pick off a Rhino with the Unholy Heat eventually. And here we do get Delirium, so this Unholy Heat could go after a Rhino if we wanted. And I decided to attack knowing I can like Bolt to trade a Rhino. Still not in good shape here by any means, but I didn't think my Ragavan was doing very much otherwise. But now I start to see a path forward where if I just hit them one more time with this Ragavan, they're dead to the double bolts. So, and drawing counterspell just means it's probably a wrap. So, I think they got a little bit greedy there and didn't play perfectly tight, but it is kind of hard to see double bolt coming, I guess. And boom, there you go down. Alright, and here's our last game against Rhinos. We open with a really nice 7. Um, Ragavan turn 1, and then we have EE e. Fluster, Preordain, Heat. A good mix of cards to make sure we can answer all their plays. Funnily, I don't think suspending Rhinos turn 1 is even that bad against Murktide a lot of the time. Um, just because, like, it doesn't get hit by Pierce or Fluster as easily, so it requires an EE -E to be answered. And here I think what we do is we go top-top with the plan of playing Shredder and probably triggering it with an Explosives and still holding Fluster up and then getting ready to set up a Murktide. Probably ditch the Unholy Heat so that we can make, like, a 5-5 five -five Murktide and just try to get off to the races. There's a, a risk of Endurance here. Which they do have endurance. Okay. So this Murktide gets a little bit delayed, but we did hold on to the Preordain, which is gonna help us refill. And here I think I sh just jam. 
but I want to hold up Fluster for uh, Flame of Anor, which makes sense. And finding the bobble was really good off the preordain. I think I get rid of the Murktide thinking, all right, these this Counterspell plus Bluster Storm with these two Shredders in play will be enough to get me through. And then I even end up having another Endurance, so I'm pretty rewarded for getting rid of that Murktide while I have the chance. I think I'm a little bit afraid of them having a Murktide, so similar dynamic where I'm going to be holding this EE until the last possible moment. Or until they can't play a Merc Tide, I should say, not the last possible moment. We draw a Fawn. Kinda awkward here. We're mostly afraid of Merc Tide. It doesn't do anything against Mystical Dispute because then you could just pay, but... I don't think hitting the land drops is even that bad here. For two reasons. One, you kinda wanna just grow your Shredders anyways. You don't want to be looting away lands. But also just invalidating their mystical disputes is going to mean the counter spell is a lot more powerful. Because it becomes basically a hard counter post board when they probably have Fawn out of their deck. If they go 5 damage and draw, we cannot let that happen. We Fawn it. And there you go, there's the Merc Tide, but we're able to counterspell it, and they don't have any way to protect it. But it would have been very good if we didn't have that counter, so... I feel good about holding on the counter. But just when I'm thinking, alright, this Merc Tide's coming down, we're gonna win, they just play another Endurance, which is pretty ridiculous. The thing is, they can't really start attacking with the Endurances, because I can just double block them. And here they go for ice, and we have to counter spell, I think, because we're afraid of getting attacked for too much. And then I'm dismembering, and I decide I want to save my shredder so I can flash in subtlety and then fluster storm the dismember afterwards. I think I make us. I decide I'm deciding if I want to fluster storm first to get them to commit the mana, but I think it's kind of obvious what's coming after that, so they could just still not commit the mana. I should have made, resolved the fluster copies before I connived, so maybe they pay, hoping that I don't have any like non-lands in hand. As soon as it's a 4-6, it does nothing. Alright, they cascade, we have two shredder triggers, hit an EE. Now I can preordain, um, preordain again, or EE, sorry. And the idea behind keeping this on Holy Heat is we can attack with our Shredders and then on Holy Heat Endurances when they try to like double or triple block even. <clears throat> and then play a Merc Tide that's going to be big. So yeah, that wins it for us. Um, some interesting games how they played out post-board. They kind of became more flashy, but I think that that kind of speaks to how well Merc Tide invalidates the Rhinos plan where Rhinos is kind of forced onto another access where they could try to go for like Endurance, Flash, and Merc Tide and flame of anores so that's why i like having the borrower to kind of close that angle off um because that's that feels like the most vulnerable angle for us to be attacked on is the merc tide angle first of all and then second is maybe endurance or just like removal spells for them to kill our shredders but we're pretty strong against the the plan a of rhinos Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Got some confidence in us. We can beat Rhinos. It's a pretty good matchup with the Ledger Shredders. And that's a good feeling. You know, we have a good matchup against 
Rhinos. We have a good matchup against Scam. These are the two most represented decks. Yawgmoth is the one that we're still working on. I think that we found plans that are getting better. Um, so check out the Patreon. We're talking a lot about that right now and how to improve the Yawgmoth matchup. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night.